thank you all for being here tonight. My focal passage is going to be Matthew 16, 13 through 16. So Matthew 16, 13 through 16. So it's going to be talking about Peter confesses Jesus as Christ. So in Matthew chapter 16, we find that Jesus and the disciples are traveling into the coast of Philippi, and they were traveling, and Jesus paused and asked them in a couple of intriguing questions. So at first he wanted to know who everybody was saying he was, but then he also wanted to know who they were saying he was. So we read in the passage where it says, starting in verse 13, when Jesus came into the reason of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come to you tonight. Just thank you for this word, Lord. I thank you for putting it on my heart, Lord. Father God, I just ask you to make sure this is your words and not of my own coming out of my mouth tonight, Lord. Lord, Lord, I just pray that this word reaches somebody tonight, Lord. Somebody that needs you, needs to know who you are truly. Father God, I lift your word today now. I lift all praise and glory to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So first you want to know again who everybody was saying he was, and then you want to know who they were saying he was. So Still, we need to know today just who Jesus really is to you. Each and everybody sees him as something. We see different religions. And he already knew who he was to them or what their answers were going to be. But the most important thing to look at is he was giving them time to think. Think about the most important question that you're ever going to have for the most important decision that you're going to have in your life. The most important decision that truly stands on who you believe Jesus Christ is. So tonight, I want you to think and listen, and while we're going through, answer to yourself, who is Jesus? So, it's been said time and time again, and like I said, it still ranks true today, that, and I've heard it in many, many sermons, if Jesus was here today, he'd be a criminal. That's true. He was all about love. He was about selflessness. He was about moving forward the kingdom of God. And we live in a world today, we were just talking about, you know, in our testimony time, the, the whole wokeness of the world. We live in a time where it is self-thinking. It's all about I. It's all about me. What I want. I don't want this child. I don't want a marriage. I would rather be with multiple people. I would rather be a millionaire. I couldn't give up my riches to go follow Christ. Now, I'm not answering that myself. But these are things that the world say today. So, Jesus himself in the world today would be an outcast. But today the world is all about, like he said, what I can get. So the disciples told Jesus that some people thought he was John the Baptist. Others thought he was Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. In other words, he was a good man. Someone that was a religious leader. No different than Pastor Sharp here myself. No different than you or anybody else in here today. In other words, he surely wasn't the son of God or God himself. Things haven't changed much. Like I said, even in today's world, we see the same thing being said over and over again. Even when I sit down and I talk with people ministerial wise, show them my testimony of things, they say, oh, yeah, he's good. He was a good guy. Yeah, oh, I can, I, I, trust me, I can work my way in that. We find more and more religions today believe that very thing. Believe it or not, even the Jewish religion today believes that's how they get to heaven, is works. They no longer go through sacrifice. It's all through works. The Mormons teach that he was a son of God, but just like a son, like I said, of you and me, the son of God, as in sons or daughters. Some think that he was someone just looking for fame. Just getting out there doing miracles and everything, a magician. To others, he's just a myth or a figment of our imagination. Nothing really real. No history about him at all. Even though we have facts to back it up. Or my favorite, a lot of people say he's just a crutch. Something for people to lean on in times when they're hurting. Something to help them get through the times. Some people say he was a great historical figure. Like I said, we have the historical background to prove he was here. He did walk the earth. He was crucified. He was certainly a good and great man. 
He was hated and ridiculed. And he is hated and ridiculed even to this very day. I was listening to a YouTube channel in which an individual, which most of you may know in here because uh, he's getting really big, uh, but Ben Shapiro was debating about who Jesus is. And he had a factual, and he's not a Christian. He's a Jew. You know, I'm not saying Jews can't be Christians, but he's not. And, he, and his, his very words is, back in the days of Christ, they weren't looking for the Christ that came. That's factual. They were looking for a king, someone that was coming through, a ruler, to change the world, get rid of all this tyranny and everything gets in and just raise them up to power. But that's not what Jesus did. He was all about love. He came for forgiveness. He came for grace. He had a completely different mission. And you know what? The people that were still waiting for Christ to come then, when he was walking the very earth that we have now, is still waiting for him to come today. They missed the opportunity. They missed the time. He's already come. He's already fulfilled the prophecy. But yet, people don't believe. And he was very factual in that. And like I said, even to this day, people still believe the same thing. People always have and always will be confused about who Jesus is. They want to mock him and abuse his very name and blaspheme him. Revelation 1, 7 says, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him. Even they who pierced him, all the tribes of the earth, all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him. Even so, amen. They can mock and blaspheme even to this day, but it's no different. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. So you can do it now or you can do it once it's too late. The people of Noah's day laughed and mocked him, but guess what? Noah had many, many hundred years to minister about the flood. Nobody listened. The flood still came. They did not. Too often we see people have the view of trying to make religion that will fit their very needs. I'm here to tell you that religion is man-made and religion will send you to hell. Religion will not save you. Religion will not forgive your sins. Religion will not hold your hand and walk you out there and say, guess what, everything's okay, you're going to heaven because you're not. You're not. If you don't have that relationship with Jesus, knowing who Jesus was, what he did, because if you don't know who Jesus was, how can you believe and have faith in him and what he did? Oof, sorry. Too often, we're trying to fit him into our very knees, just like the Mormons when we talk about he was a great man. Well, guess what? They believed his teachings were true. Did he not teach that he is the Son of God? How can you have a belief that Jesus was a great man, a great teacher, what he taught was true, and not believe he is the Son of God? Then you're saying that most of what he said is not true, infallible. You might as well take that Bible and throw it out. We all know Jesus is blaspheming around the world today. Most likely what the Bible says is little. Is Jesus just a prophet? He's a good man. And what did Peter say? He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Peter said, You are the Christ. That's Shark was just talking about it last week. Talking about Jesus the Christ. It's a title. That is the proper name. Jesus the Christ. He just stated it. It means that Jesus the Christ believed that he is anointed one, the Messiah, the prophet, the Savior, Son of God, that he was who he said he was and who he claims to be. And that rings true to this very day. Do you believe he is the Son of God? He went on to say that he was the Son of the living God. He recognized Jesus for who he claimed to be. Jesus is truly the Christ the Messiah and truly is the anointed one, the begotten Son of the living God. Not dead, just like that movie said. Jesus is not dead. He is still alive and well, living within us, right here in this very room today, just like he promised. The Bible says that Jesus is your Lord, your comforter, your advisor, your mediator, your advocate, your strength, your inspiration, your protector, your provider, your shepherd, your master, your peace. What is he to you? Is he providing this to you? Are you receiving this? Or are you looking at him like fire insurance and you're receiving nothing because you never truly came to know him? Does he know who you are today? If you really want to know who Jesus is, then you need to get into the book, the Bible, who identifies who he is. You need to get into his word. Start reading his word and stop relying on the word. The world today is going to feed you lies to meet again 
what they feel they need religion to meet. More importantly, today if we consider who the Bible says Jesus is, but now, like I said, we need to consider who He is to us. Because if I'm looking at Him as just another man, then we have a problem. We have a problem. There's no man that can forgive my sins. There's no man that can die for my sins. There's only one that was perfect. What is, excuse me. What does the name Jesus really mean to you? Even the devil knows the name of Jesus. Even the devil was with Jesus in the desert. Even the devil understands that he's going to have to answer to everything that he's done one day. But he doesn't care. The devil believes in Jesus Christ. Any of us can believe but not truly understand who he is. It's just this, that when we're seeing in modern day Christianity is some sort of what they call a 50-50 wah-wah, a, a lukewarm, or some people call it a pseudo-Christianity. Something you're not hot, not cold, but yet in the middle. It's a feel-good show that we live in today. And that's why so many people have doubts about revival breaking out. Unfortunately, a lot of churches today are about that feel-good nature and not about the preaching of 100% of God's Word. And I'm sorry, but whenever I came to be ordained, that's one thing that I had to promise, is I would preach the Bible inside and out. Those you want to hear, and that you don't want to hear as well. We need it all. We are to glorify God. If Jesus walked with us each day of our lives, if Jesus went to work with you tomorrow, and someone said to you, who is Jesus? Would you turn to Him and be able to say who He really was and who He is in your life? Will they have that message read out loud by the life that you live? Or is someone going to say, I couldn't hear you saying who Jesus was over your actions. They were speaking louder than your words. God's saying that's ringing true today. There's a few who deny God with their lips. But millions deny God with their lives. This is something, again, a message I got from uh, an atheist I was looking through when I was reading Harold Vaughn. It says, there are a few that deny God with their lips, but millions who deny God with their lives. Belief in God is at an all-time high, while morality is at all-time low. Our currency states, in God we trust, but our policies prove that we trust in anything but God. Our denominations claim to represent God, but in principle and in practice are actually opposed to God. Our conservative churches claim to believe in the Bible, yet very few obey the black and white injunctions that it contains. Christians in America have a high regard for the Bible, but only 38% read it weekly. In reality, most professing Christians have no more regard for the Bible than junk mail in your email. They don't even read it. Sadly, it's true. I've been trying to get the youth to read their Bibles. Mrs. Carol even gave several of them a little Book of John Bible. I think it was, Book of John. And each week I ask them, who's read their Bibles? Just give me one verse. And no one's ever, to say, ever able to say anything. And that's a youth. And you come to, to, to expect that from the younger kids because we're trying to mold them and help them to understand they need to be in God's Word. But the problem is, it's not just the youth. It's our adults, our seniors. We all fail to be in God's Word. We're living just as atheists live. Atheists don't pray. Atheists don't read their Bible. Atheists don't go to church. But yet we still find that we are following the same path as Christians or so-called Christians. Who is Jesus to you? Is He someone that you're truly following? Is any of this getting your attention today? I'm telling you it's important because a lot of us see Christ, uh, Jesus as just that last thing that I said, the, the thing that everybody uses is a crutch. If you see him as a crutch, you've got a problem. We need to talk. We need to see the true meaning of Jesus Christ. There are too many people that come to say that they didn't know what they were doing. They didn't understand it. They had this emotion come up with pride and, and joy. Well, big problem there, pride. They come forward because their friends came forward. They come forward because they were being pushed to at home that they don't understand, but then it ends right there. And so we have so many people coming forward and accepting Christ falsely because they didn't truly understand who Christ is and what He was and who He was and what He did, but then the church drops the ball and 
doesn't teach them any further. Because I'm telling you, new Christians have to learn a different way than we do. You have to feed them. I'm telling you, where's the proof in your life of who Jesus is? If He is truly who you believe as your Lord and Savior, if He is truly God, if He is truly everything, your number one in your life, then why do we worry so much? Why do we have so much worry about death? About what's to come? And, and I say this for me personally because I honestly, and you can ask Jackie, I, I've said this in many times in services here, when, when we get an argument or something, I smile. I know everything's going to be okay. If it's not an argument as far as relationship, I'm talking about money or something, I'm like, God's going to bless us. God's going to take care of us. We had issues with our vehicle. We're going down and needing all these repairs. And I, I, I just kept saying, God's always come through. Don't worry. God's going to bless us. Be faithful to Him. Trust in Him, the Almighty. There is nothing He can't do. And guess what? I've said this in my testimony, but we got a $300 check in the mail from a couple years ago saying, hey, we just owe you money. Here you go. And I was like, whoa, where'd this come from? Caught by surprise. You better believe that was of God. God blesses us and helps us. But I'm telling you, you've got to know who He is and worship Him and trust Him and be in His Word. I want you to answer who Jesus is to you today. The Israelites, tired of waiting for Moses, made a golden calf to suit their needs. They sought to reduce God to something he could they could control. So if God is that crutch in your life, you're leaning on, who is truly guiding who? Are you controlling or trying to control God in this box? Are you trying to say, it's not worth it for the time, but when I need you, I'll go ahead and pull you out of the closet? Are you truly lifting Him up and praising Him? Are you putting other things before Him? I'm constantly talking about idols with you. Because there's so many things we put before Jesus Christ to this very day. Whether it be TV, whether it be relationships, our own relationships can be put before God. Husband and wife. Is He number one in your life today? Who is Jesus? I'm telling you right now, He's everything you'll ever need. I know you have needs just like the rest of us. I know I suffer just as much as anybody financially. I, I suffer with depression. I, I suffer with not wanting to get up in the morning and go to work. I, I suffer with all that stuff. But I know when I get up in the morning, God gave me that breath for a reason. I know when I got up in the morning, Jesus said, I have somebody for you to speak with. Somebody for you to share my message with. Somebody I'm going to bless through you. Who is Jesus to you? I'm thinking about you growing up in homes where divorce is normal. And it, it, we see moving being normal. Right now we have a lot of our youth that's moving. We have another one tell us today that he's moving. Moms and dads are fighting. I, I, I've watched, I watched that live TV on uh, TV just to see all the domestic violence that happens. Day in and day out. Call after call for them. And it's happening right here in our very own town as well. You live in a house full of people, yet you feel alone. Your job's bleak at best. When you get there, you feel like you're not doing anything because you're not spreading God's word. You're not leading. You're not following the path that God's leading you to. I'm telling you, look inside yourself and find out who it is that you're truly following or who God, Jesus, is to you. He's the only one who can meet all of your needs. All those needs I just spoke about, it's all the ones that we're always, just like Ms. Carol talked about a little bit ago, looking in the wrong places. I've been down that path myself. I've told you all about my testimony and my history where I was addicted to drugs. I was addicted to painkillers for a long, long time. And I'm telling you right now, for those of you who haven't been, when you are on those, you have a feeling of joy. You have that feeling where you're, you feel happy. You feel motivated to go through the day, and it's an addiction. Because when it starts to wear off, everything goes down you. Aches and pains. You start to have arguments where you'll lash out at people, and now you know that's Satan. Grabbing a hold of you, using you for his ministry, because he has a ministry as well. Pulling people away from God. 
Again, I ask you, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus to you? Is he your magic genie or is he the Christ? The real, the Christ. The Son of the living God. Is he someone that you just go to when you need a few bucks and need help? Do you talk to him day in and day out? Do you truly have a relationship with him? Even if you truly know who Jesus is, you can still lack the relationship. I'm telling you, some of you in here today, in person or online, don't know him at all. It's very possible. Uh, we all remember we had a pastor here at one point, I won't say the name, but got saved with Jackie during a revival. The pastor got saved in this very church. It don't, you don't always truly know until you look within. Peter said to the Lord, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior, the Son of the living God. John said, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever should believe in Him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Why? Why would He do that if He wasn't the Christ, the Messiah, the Savior? Salvation is about your soul. It's about eternal destination in heaven. But you've got to acknowledge who Jesus Christ is. Who actually did the act. The Bible says that when a person dies, their body is laid to rest, but their soul goes to one of two places. Heaven or hell. Where you're going hinges on that decision you made. Hinges on who you see Jesus as. Luke 19.10 says, Jesus said, The Son of Man is come to seek and save that which was lost. He's looking for you. He's seeking after you. Just like He is seeking after me. Even as Christians, we fall off the wrong path. Let's be guided back on. But He's seeking for the lost. We need to be out there spreading the gospel. What does all this mean for you? It means that you need to recognize that you're a sinner. That you're a born in sin, and if you're willing to choose sin, then you're heading to hell. The wages of sin is death. But the gift of everlasting life is offered by God, Jesus Christ Himself. You might say, well, I believe in God, and God is a good God. He wouldn't send anybody to hell or anything. He can never harm me because... I go to church every day because I'm a good person. Because I buy people meals, homeless people. I do all this stuff, but I'm telling you, there's nothing you can do. Nothing. There's only one, one way to heaven. And that's through Jesus Christ Himself. The holiness of God demands justice. And with the sin that we have in our lives, we will answer for that. Those are the words of a fool saying, no thanks, I'll pay my own way. No thanks, I can earn my own way. A fool that will be eternally spending in hell. We need to get on our knees and admit to God we're sinners. Admit to God that we truly believe in Him. It's Jesus Christ, the Christ. Truly love Him, that agape love, the true love for God, not like Pastor Sharpie was talking about today. That brotherly love. I'm sorry, but the love we have for God, there is no earthly love that fits that. It's a love truly beyond. If you're a child of God, you may need to repent today. Have you reduced God down to that little box that you set aside or to the TV that you just watch a sermon every now and then on or YouTube? I get a lot of YouTube videos from people you know, that's great and all that you're watching things, but are you watching the truth? Are you digging into His Word and studying? Are you bringing those videos to a church and saying, tell me what's wrong? Or a pastor, someone, a Christian, someone that you know is in their Bible and knows the Word. I can tell you, I've told one person, I've told many actually, I will never answer a question biblically that I don't know the answer to. I, I don't know everything. I've forgotten more than I'd like to admit. Uh, in college? What college? I forgot it. I'm telling you. But I'll be in that Bible with you. I'll show you who the Christ is. I'll show you why you need him. Maybe even more importantly, 
I'll show you how you can suck them today. And not have fire insurance, but to have that everlasting guarantee, that promise from the Christ Himself that you will one day be in glory with Him. Let's pray. Tell me, Father, Lord, I just thank you today. I thank you for this word, Lord. Father God, I, I skipped so much of it, but I know that what came out was your word and your word alone. Father, I lift you today, and Lord, I just pray that each and every person in here knows you, Lord. I pray that each and every person sees you as the Christ, Lord. Your Lord and Savior, and not just someone there as a crutch. Someone there for whenever they're needed. Father, I lift you now. Bless everybody here today. Get them home safely, Lord. And strengthen them for your ministry that you're preparing them for. We love you and thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Amen.